Like, you know, we're going to pop in with John Mons and 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 John Mons Okay, I guess everybody would have to, you know, catch up a little bit. But right now we're going to have, you know, the chat open. Before we had panelists, it was just too much going on, too much sounds and too much, you know, from different people's houses. So it's better that we have this discussion via um, chat and just, you know, we lead the discussion. Um, if anybody, you know, wants to feels like they have to elaborate, they don't want to type too much. I guess we can negotiate then to make you a panelist and then drop it. <laughs> negotiate them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so it's based on, you know, how everything's gonna run. But we're gonna make you panelists then. If um, you know, and then we'll just start the dialogue from there. Is there yeah. anything else I'm missing? No, that's basically it. Okay. So um the first thing, the discussion we wanted to have today is basically we want to ask people, do they have an understanding of what an unhealthy relationship is? You can just write everything in the comments. And then we start the dialogue from there. Yeah, when you think of an unhealthy relationship, what comes to mind? Give y'all some time to answer. We don't want to dominate it. Yeah, don't answer all at once, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Jessica said it. I think it's an unequal balance of power, which definitely. I would say, I would say based on that that comment, it is an unequal balance of power. But we gotta we gotta define who's really given the power because some people are very <laughs> passive. Yeah. And they're powerful in that way because in public, they come off as the victim in the relationship, which they get all the support. When they get all the support, it does change the power balance because it makes the other person the villain. Mm -hmm. And then the power changes. So we really would have to define what power mean in that instance. So Jurassic said not being aligned and walking in the same direction. Well, it would only be unhealthy if you guys agreed to walk in the same direction and then one person decided to bust a solo. Definitely. I mean, I think what you said was 100%. I mean, that still would be a line. Like, I don't think a relationship can truly flourish if you're not having agreements mm -hmm. and you're not deciding to walk in that straight line. So me and Jerry was having a discussion earlier about how we tend to go into a relationship and we agree on things. We agree on different aspects of life in the beginning and then we think it's okay to just change our minds mm -hmm. based on that so i mean i would say being aligned and walking in the same direction is the whole relationship like you got to make sure that y'all constantly patching those holes up if y'all not walking in the same direction Des desia said when one person is in control over the other so you know desia the thing about control is it gets a bad rap Definitely. So the, the the true definition of control means that you're you're taking you're taking charge of a situation. Definitely. So the way that we typically think of control, we think of another person forcing another person to do something. Mm -hmm. But it's still a choice. <laughs> Same time, like we have to start looking at it like the whole abusive relationship portion of of life, where people are being dominated and it's not within their it's not like within their will. Mm -hmm. they're, they're being dominated and literally they have a hard time getting out of that situation because it's an abusive relationship. Mm -hmm. It's not as high as you think. So mm -hmm. most times people have the ability to walk away from these bad situations, but they're getting something out of it as well. Yeah, absolutely. So they're not willing to leave whether the person pays the bills, whether the person funds them financially, things of that nature. They do not you know, they do not pay, they do not want to leave because they don't want to um, walk away from what they're getting out of a relationship. Ultimately, mm -hmm. they believe that the, a new person won't be able to provide that. Mm -hmm. So first, you have to definitely understand your worth. So when it comes to control, you know, when it definitely comes to control, we need to look at that as a, as a good thing because yeah. the problem is not, 
like having control is not a problem. It's forcing that control or trying to control somebody else through, you know, manipulation and through unjust means. Mm -hmm. That's where we now have to say controlling people through unjust means. We can't just use one word to define mm -hmm. it because those words can put any word with it. It can change the definition of that word. Absolutely. Yeah, that was me so, 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 many years, so many years ago. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm glad if you're out of the situation, I'm glad that you're out of the situation. But what part of it was you? What part of it was you, you'll say? And Drastic and Jessica, y'all can just, you know, comment, respond anytime y'all want. Mm -hmm. We want the dialogue to stay constant. Can they switch to attendees? Oh, she can't see Dacia. I guess she can't see her comments. Yeah, Dacia, you can switch to attendees. Jasmine just joined us. Jasmine, you can switch to attendees so everybody can see. Oh, no, we actually can do that for y'all. Everybody <laughs> should be able to see everything now. Okay. See, that's what we was talking about, us being old. That's what we was talking about. We had, we had control this whole time. That's what controls a, a great thing and we didn't utilize it. <laughs> Word. So, you know, y'all can just always add because we don't want to dominate. This is the time for all of us to have a discussion. We just want, you know, we want people present. We don't want too many people's backgrounds distracting us. So I know it's harder to type. It's harder to keep and stay engaged when you're typing, but you know, we can have this discussion. So, I mean, I can start off with like, we look at, we spend a lot of our time, like I, the other day I was um, trying to talk my two-year-old into doing something. And, you know, he was, he was being two and he was, you know, rebelling against it and he refused. And kids always force you to really think about what you're asking them to do and is it really as important as it needs to be. So it's an example of what control is when it's negative because I just wanted it done because I wanted it done. I didn't pay attention to the fact that he wasn't finished watching something on TV and it can get done after he finishes what he's watching. You know, like I didn't, I wasn't mindful of what's going on with him. All I'm thinking is he needs to be disciplined to listen. And at that moment I had to pause and really look at where I was coming from and really look at was what I had, what I needed to get done. Was it as important or imminent? And it wasn't at all. So sometimes you have that understanding, but go ahead, Jerry. Jurassic. Oh yeah. So Jurassic wants to know if we could have the ability to, as a panelist to mute people and control who's unmuted. Yeah, you definitely can do that. That's definite. That's definite, but we won't know when they, we don't know when they want to talk yeah and you know people get passionate and we're definitely big on allowing people to speak in real time so it gets a little more it gets a little difficult on that level but definitely like we definitely can do that so you know if it ain't gonna get outrageous we you know we just want to practice have a have a good practice in place before so many people so jessica there's four people well for six Six total with me and Aziz. Definitely. It's less than it was last time. Yeah. We just want something in place so when people start joining, because we were anticipating about, I think, 16 people. Mm -hmm. So that would have been heavy. So if we didn't have this in place, when people join, there would have been an issue. Yeah. But let's go back. When you think of healthy relationships, or rather, we, we, we typically think what's normal to us is what's healthy, right? So we, we foster these relationships with people based on what we think we know at the moment, but they may, but that may not necessarily mean that it's healthy. So a lot of times we need other people around us to let us know that some of the things that, that we're doing or some of the behaviors that we have are not the healthiest. Would any of the panelists agree with that? Have you ever been in a situation where somebody addressed that your behavior 
or the way that you, well, I guess it's still a behavior. Your behavior is not healthy. And you, you went through 20 years of your life thinking what you was doing was okay, but it really wasn't okay. Okay, we give well, an example. So I give an example of being an effective communicator. So I grew up in a household where it was pretty hostile, right? And we were always, um, when it came to communicating, we always cut each other off. We never really listened to what the other one was saying. And it was very argumentative. Like it just started out like we all in the house was just like always going at each other. But that was how we communicated at home. Like that was normal to me. So when I started communicating with other people, they automatically shut me down and they used to shut down and not really want to deal with me because I was always at 10 because that was the way I learned how to communicate. And I had to have other people around me. Well, not everyone took the time to do it, but I had other people around me, the people that cared or cared about me or wanted to teach me or was willing to, to go against what I was doing so that I could be the best person at the time who taught me that that wasn't the best way to communicate. There was a better way. Definitely. I see that, drastic, is, drastic is saying, you know, he received those criticisms as a young man. Mm -hmm. a teen. Yeah. Which, I mean, to piggyback off what Jerry was saying and to add to that is the, the sad thing is unhealthy is the norm. Yeah. So we work our hardest to be normal. We work our, our hardest to be average, to relate, to connect. And when we see exceptional people, we tend to look at them and we respect them, but nobody wants to be around. And we always talk about we want to be around people who respect us, but nobody really wants to be around somebody who respects them because typically you respect your parents, but you lie, cheat. You don't yeah, really want yeah, to. Yeah. You always feel judged by them. And that's the same mentality we carry on. We only want to be around friends who aren't going to judge us and aren't going to correct us and aren't going to do certain things and who are going to let us dictate them with emotion who's going to let us run over them and who like we have so many different things and that that's becoming the norm so when you have somebody that you definitely respect and somebody that's trying to always tell you to do the right thing whether you're ready or not we tend to shy away from those people so it becomes you know it becomes a more of an issue but well yeah like jessica said that because you know because when when you grow up seeing unhealthy, you think it's normal. Her dad, her mom and dad used to verbally abuse each other. And she found that most comfort in the relationship that mirrored that. Yeah, agreed. I mean, I never, like, so I never really ran from conflict, you know, and I typically think that that's a badge of honor. I mean, it's not a bad thing, but I don't run from, com from conflict because of all the conflict that I grew up around. So I, I was like raised to be a fighter. <laughs> and so I carried that with me my whole entire life and yeah it's it's and i feel like you like i guess to your point i never I, I never really felt comfortable fighting with the people that i love but i never backed down from it and i think that yeah you do find comfort in discomfort which is the craziest thing but it's the reality Definitely. so desia said that she's learning how to communicate in her relationship yeah, they, I mean, they'll see it and that's good. I mean, mm -hmm. I feel like you also said you are in a loving relationship now. So mm -hmm. it's good that you progress. It's good that you learn. It's good that, you know, you're in a place that is, that feels like a lot more grounded, a lot more meaningful. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I think that that's always, that's always a plus to be in those, those balanced relationships. I mean, are y'all equals? Like when we say loving, what does what does that mean to you? I just want you to write that, and then we move on to the next person's question. But I'll come back to you. But I really want you to understand what love and relationship means. Because it means mm -hmm. too many things to too many different people. So I want to understand it. And drastic says to take it or leave it person. I'd rather <laughs> be hated for who I am than love for who I'm not. And that's 100%. Yeah, I agree that's with that too. 100% true. And we, we do blur those lines because, I mean, all of us have a feed on Facebook. And we all yeah. kind of know the people, some of the people on Facebook. And they always have this love me for who I am type mentality. And we know damn sure they need to change. Like, yeah. they need to adjust who they are. So 
I mean, that's a nice statement, but it's all it always has to it always has to be who who are you though? Like what aren't you willing to change? Because I, I believe who we are single is not who we are with a group. Absolutely. Our relationship because we actually have to move their their stuff into our house. Mm-hmm. Who you are singular is definitely not who you are with somebody. So there's got to be a compromise. It has to be compromise. So I want you to elaborate on, you know, the type of person you are and, you know, grow from there. So Desia, um, she, she answered the question. So caring, I never understood what that meant, loving all my craziness and getting help for my mental health. So basically, you, you are around people who cared enough about you to push you in the right direction to get the help that you needed. And that's what I was going to say to add on to Drastic's point as well. Like, you know, it's one thing, you don't necessarily want a person to love you for who you take it or leave it, basically, because there may be areas of you that can, that you may, that may need improvement, right? So you want to be around people who's going to challenge you enough to be, so that you can be the best version that you want to be. And I think that that's really important. You guys got me one. <laughs> Sorry, you guys got me crying. Well, well, I'm glad that this has, you know, reflecting on certain things and you are connecting with us because that's what it's all about. That's why we're here. That's why we have Love as a Group Journey because we want to continue to, to touch people just like you. So I'm glad that you're touched and I hope it's happy tears and progressive tears. And, you know, we're, we're, we're here. Yeah. So Drastic says, my goal is to always be the best version of myself that I can be, so I'm willing to change in the name of growth. That's great. My previous statement was more about me being honest and living my truth. I won't lie or pretend. Yeah, and you shouldn't. Definitely, you definitely shouldn't lie and pretend. It's just like, I mean, when we see growth, now, though, you know, like, I always emphasize on spiritual words because there's 30,000 people saying the same stuff. Like, oh, I'm growing. Oh, we always have to grow. We always got to live through growth. And true growth in the in relationship is working towards what you signed on for, working towards the agreement, working towards everything it takes to, 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 actually, to actualize the actual agreement that y'all agreed to and maintain it. Mm-hmm. So what people don't really understand is once you found the place, like how many times do you get to relax in the place that you actually worked for? Like, when do you retire? Because love, love should be, though it is going to have trying times with outside forces, within the relationship, there should be a lot of maintaining and retiring. Like, you have to fill that retirement with a person. And if you're always trying to, quote, unquote, find that growth in you, I would think that that person loves you for the person they met. So it's really about maintaining through all the madness. It's maintaining the exact person you are. It's maintaining, and I'm obviously talking about your greater attributes, the things that they love about you, not the things that you have to adjust. But it's about maintaining those things because how many people, and I'm going to ask this question, how many people been in relationships and after the relationships became bitter? Bitter or better? Bitter, bitter. Bitter, yeah. Well, I mean... I think that I well to when when I when I saw everybody. when huh that's everybody on the panel go ahead when drastic world growth I thought of just being I I automatically just thought of being the best version of yourself not necessarily looking for just always looking for something else you know what I mean Definitely. like I kind of looked at it like you're around people who is not unafraid to challenge you to 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 step up basically Definitely I'm just challenging people to speak clear no, that's fine. Because when you use spiritual words, yeah. what's growth to you is not growth to them. Mm-hmm. You know, like what's growth to you, like I'm a person that loves to sit back. I have the patience to sit back and have discussions with people. And a lot of people arguing and going back and forth and fussing them. But I'll stay there the whole time and have the discussion for three or four hours because I don't like to walk away from the discussion and have to come back. I like to come, have the discussion, find common ground, so we can walk as one unit. And to do that, you have to constantly sit there and make sure you grow as a unit. Now that would be growth, right? Mm-hmm. But I explained that I didn't just use growth. Yeah, I but got at it. at the same time, somebody might think that that 
they're too argumentative. I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you stay there. They might think that what they're doing is, is growing mm -hmm. because they're walking away. Like they are maintaining what we were talking about, what Delcia was talking about. Walking away and that's the control. Because we see that on every movie, every love story we ever watch. Yeah, the absolutely. That walks away seems to have all the control. Yeah. And we look at the other person as being argumentative or the person being messed up or the person saying something that's hurtful, but really the person that walks away shouldn't have the, the all the power because at the end of the day, you don't just walk away. You make a dis you have a discussion and you say, listen, it's a lot for me to handle right now. I'm coming, I'll come back to you tomorrow. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take some time to myself. Mm -hmm. You have to communicate. You have to communicate that. So when I'm thinking of growth, when I'm thinking of maintenance, when I'm thinking of all the words we just use independent, I want to make sure that everything's clear. Mm -hmm. Even though drastic you did explain being the best version of yourself. But you know, like all the stuff that's being said, we all understand it and we all hear it as a cliche thing. And I know you deeper than that, but at the same time, I want people to always speak on a panel clear, be clear and be definitive in what you're talking about. Because when you are speaking to other people, they don't know what that means. Yeah. Or they can assume like I did. <laughs> yeah. They could assume like, oh, it's the mm -hmm. best version of yourself. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. So I always recommend people in the beginning of your relationships be very long winded until you build that that bond where y'all are actually in it together. Y'all actually are in it for the long haul. And then y'all have a great understanding of who each other is. Then y'all can kind of small talk it because y'all kind of understand each other's intentions. Yeah. Once you understand each other's intentions, you you speak the same language. But until then, you gotta work to speak the same language. Absolutely. That's very important. I mean, how many people are searching to be have you know healthy relationships around them all together? Okay. Everybody. Mm -hmm. And how do you go about doing that? So I know that when I know that when we were on last Thursday, we talked about, you know, significant others versus friendship. And a lot of people, well, not a lot of people, there were some people that believe that friendship and significant others are two different things. Or, you know, the relationship that you have with your family, your friends, and your significant other is different. But it's all a commitment. It's all, you know, if you're really fostering relationships with these people, you tip, you love them, you, you sign up to be a part of their lives. and it's all interchangeable. The only thing that's difference between the only difference is the only difference between a significant other and a friendship is the intimate part of it. So would you like, how do you foster those relationships with a friend versus a family member versus a significant other? And Jasmine said yes, because it's all about principle, beliefs, and foundation, which means that that everything transfers over. Not Desia said, not just with my partner, with my family. Mm -hmm. Jasmine also said, what makes one relationship work is going to make another work. Jessica said, I think first you need to gauge your readiness to receive. Once I make exceptions, I'm not aligned, aligned with myself. Yeah, that's Jazz. Oh, that's Jazz. Sorry. So, Jazz, Jessica. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree with everything everybody's saying. I mean, you do have to, you have to be able to, you have to be in a position to receive. And mm -hmm. that's, that's, a, that's, that's half of it. You know, you have to also be in a clear, in a, in a place to give, you know what I mean? In a clear, in a clear place to give, like take the time, be patient, you know, do everything possible to make sure the relationship flourishes. So it's give and take and you, and nobody should just be a listener because they, people always act like listening is this mature portion of it. And really there's too many listeners. Yeah. But don't say much, you know, and we need we need we need more talkers. We need more we, we need listeners also. We need people who are able to do both. And you you need to learn to dance. Mm -hmm. Dance of when to listen and when not to when to talk and when to speak. 
And if everybody needs to have that time and that, you know, that comfort to do so, you know, how do you so, define intimacy? Well, physical, well, sexual, basically, you don't typically have sex with your friends. So although you are intimate with your friends, like Aziz and I, <laughs> we're not intimate in the way that a boyfriend and girlfriend would be intimate, but the, our closeness, um, the things that we talk about would be considered intimate. Wouldn't you say, Aziz? I wouldn't say intimacy is the only difference. I'm, I'm thinking sex is the only difference. Well, wouldn't well like when I think it, of intimacy? Well, I guess you're I wouldn't, even, sex. I wouldn't even. I wouldn't even. I wouldn't even go that far because you can. You can be fooling around with your friend. You can have sex with your friend. Yeah, you could. So it's really it's the commitment. It's the commitment to go through life in a a committed relationship. Like when you're with your partner, when you're with your partner, because they all committed relationships. Excuse me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Partner, when you're with your partner, y'all are the only ones that share everything. Your friends go home. Yeah. Your friends have significant others. Your friends have, y'all the only ones that literally share everything. You know what I'm saying? So that's what the difference would be, is that y'all, y'all are the, y'all the core of every other relationship. So that would be the, the, the difference right there. So go ahead. Sometimes this is Jessica, right? Yeah. Sometimes I take some explanation first before you dive in. Bon chica wow, bow wow. <laughs> okay, I don't know what that means. <laughs> but yeah, I do think that we we would have you would have to definitely explain. Like there's so many things that that we in an hour obviously you can't cover in an hour, but the main focus is what drastic measures said earlier in discussion, like bring everything you are to the discussion. If you look up, if you look up honesty, it's absence of pretense, right? Mm -hmm. if you look up honesty, it's genuine, sincere. Absence of deceit. Like you do not, it, it, there's no feelings in that definition. So you got to ask yourself, do you truly want trust? Do you truly want honesty? Because we always say the truth hurts. That's not the truth. The truth hurts when we don't want to hear it. Yeah, absolutely. The truth motivates us when we truly want to hear it. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's a positive thing, it doesn't hurt us. It, it truly, it truly motivates us either way. So once you become a proponent of the truth, it allows you to make decisions. Somebody can say you're unattractive, but still be attracted to you. You got to hear what's being said. So yes, it's the truth. That part of it hurts. But they said through the fact that I'm not turned on by the way you look, I'm turned on by other aspects of you and still want to move forward which is more romantic than anything else than them stroking your ego so you have to really start understanding you want to be a proponent of the truth you got to really marry the truth and really yeah. want to hear the truth and not try to manipulate it through emotional means so yeah. Yeah, Jess, jessica definitely you do have to get explanations first before you dive in but you also got to dive in as well you know like D diving in is the part where you'll get all the explanations if you're true to who you are. Yeah. Because the, the other person, there's no running from it. Either they explain it or they don't, and then you realize that they're probably not the person for you if they don't want to explain. Yeah, and Jasmine is saying it all goes back to communication, just like Jurassic Medicine, or y'all all can read it. And it's about, you know, it is about defining your terms. Everything mm -hmm. is about, like, a lot of people do a lot of the hard work in the, at, the, at the end or in the middle of a relationship. But all that hard work should be in the beginning. All them shows that you see on TV that are always trying to convince you or them self-help books you're reading that are trying to convince you that, oh, well, you need to um, really hold stuff back and not dive right in and not offend and not do... No, be exactly who you are. You won't offend the right, per the right people for you. Yeah, absolutely. They will be more intrigued by exactly who you are. Mm -hmm. And when I say who you are, I'm saying leading with your strengths. I don't believe being totally honest is, is, is a weakness. Mm -hmm. Well, some people in the beginning of a relationship, they, they want to appease you. So that's another thing. Like they agree with everything and it's like, oh, that's what I was thinking. Or that's what, you know, that's what I do. And there's nothing to really support that. And that's how they, you know, people kind of get you sucked in that way as well. Definitely. By just appeasing your ego. I mean, and if we, we're all honest. We've all been in places where we want our ego stroke. And we got to ask ourselves, did we learn from that? Did we learn the type of people with 
like the heartache it came, that came later on. And are we comfortable with not, like, isn't it easy to let somebody go in the beginning when you're not all emotionally charged attached. and tied in, yeah, emotionally attached and tied in versus letting go of somebody four years in? Yeah. Where y'all already have investments, y'all already, like, y'all probably have children. Mm-hmm. Like, it gets a lot more difficult when people shortcut the beginning of it and then start this life where they want to do more things and they want, and they start to have children and they start, like, I'm, I know men that actually don't want any kids that had kids. Mm-hmm. And now they're horrible fathers. Yeah. You know? But I actually had men that didn't want kids, told their wife they didn't want kids. Their wife got pregnant and they was horrible fathers, but they were straight up with the woman. Mm-hmm. So like we we have we have services, we have relationship services and all kinds of people. We talk to all kinds of people, right? Mm-hmm. And um we gotta give them advice based on their circumstance. Yeah, absolutely. So sometimes being accountable and that that obviously that's where we where we're about accountability. So being accountable is like taking responsibility for the part you play. Because if somebody tells you they don't want something and don't go back on it, they don't want it. Yeah. So you got to make decisions based on what's important for you. What could you live with for the long term? Yeah. And you know, all your relationships. And so many people are so, they so used to allowing their emotions to help them get them what they want. So you know, if you see a man and a woman and I'm ready to settle down and you're not quite ready to settle down, but we've been together for X amount of years, most people's going to see like, well, why, why are you stringing her along when all along you said you didn't want to be in a committed relationship anyway? You know what I mean? So it's, it's, I think that a lot of people go into situations believing that they could change people. And in, cer- in certain situations, you, may, you, you might be able to change people, but in a lot of cases, you can't. So like, as you said, if somebody shows you their cards, then read them and, and keep it moving if it doesn't fit what you want. This, and, and just to go, you know, with the last statement of what Jessica said, that she, you know, that she looks at who's talking mm-hmm. and you no, know, she looks at who's talking to her and what's their intentions. And I think that's, that's, that's what it's about. It's a, like five, five people can say, the same thing and that's what i was trying to explain the drastic measures about like growth and five people can say the same thing but it's different based on who the person is Mm -hmm. so i do agree with that statement 100 percent. everything's about that person's true intentions Mm -hmm. everything's about that person's true intentions is that person really committed you know what i mean and that's what we really need to look at because a person, a person, and when, when we're talking about intention, let, let's be clear, when we're talking about intention, it's mindful because a person can feel they have good intentions. But when you dig deep, really, you dig a lot deeper, it's coming from a selfish place. Yeah, that too. It's coming from a self serving place. Like when you truly have great intentions, you're very mindful of the outcome. Meaning, if I do this, this is going to affect this person this way. A lot of people just do it, had quote unquote good intentions, but destroyed 20 other people in the process. They weren't thinking, they were thinking, this is what I want to do to help this individual. Mm -hmm. But you always got to be mindful of what you're letting go. Like before I jump in the car to help a kid that's ready to get hit by a car and I jump in front of a car, I got to be mindful of what I'm leaving behind. Mm -hmm. I have to. Because that's going to make that choice for me. So Jessica said, but who's your tribe? Who are you helping? I mean, I guess you, when you're saying helping somebody. Who is, she responding to, who is she responding to? Oh, I think, thank you. Am I? I think there's somebody that might have wrote that. Yeah. She's saying it rhetorically. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You well, are. You, you're, you're like you're helping a stranger. Well, it all depends. I, I've got to a point in my life where I only want to help people that I feel like helping. I'm not here to save the, like, I don't want to just help random people. Cause like, as you said, it takes away from your core group. 
So I don't necessarily help just randoms, but at the same time, like I am, I have, I believe in humanity. So there's certain things that I do. Like if I want to give, like for instance, there's an old lady that lives in my building and based on what's going on with the, with the coronavirus, I told, I told her that I'll check in on her every day to make sure that she's taken care of, that she has everything that she needs. And I told her that, you know, I was coming down to stay with family, but I'll check in with her every week to see if she needs um, me to bring anything. I mean, she's like 80 and she was very thankful. I mean, she's a stranger. I don't know her. She's a neighbor. Um, we don't really have a major connection, but I know that, you know, the elderly are struggling, you know, with what's going on right now. So I really wanted to help her. So in that case, she is a stranger. I decided to help her. So I guess it depends. Yeah. I'm only compelled to help people that actually make sense. I'm not helping everybody. It's just like when we talked about borrowing money. If you mm -hmm. don't have the money to give, you truly don't have a savings. You truly don't, you know, it's going to put you in a worse situation. It's not dire for them. And you got to make decisions based on that. Mm -hmm. So like, how who is it taken away from when you're helping this person? Yeah. If you can say to yourself, it's not really taken away from me, but it will give somebody else. And that's how I kind of, I kind of gauge it on that level. You know what I mean? To maintain my healthy, because like Jazz said, it does deal with priority. It does mm -hmm. really deal with priority. And, and you have to know your priorities. Like that's one of the, that's one of the lessons. And that's one of the, um, that's one of the, the, um, what, what am I trying to say, Jerry? That's one of it's one of the things like with our, with our builders, we always have them go home and think about their, their, think five about priorities. their priorities. And we yeah. want, we want to understand what's your priorities list them mm -hmm. because everything is a set. Everything is based on your belief. If you believe a person that is in your best interest is always doing you harm, you're going to believe it. Yeah. I know everybody's been around people who no matter what they have, they always, always, don't trust what you're saying, mm -hmm. no matter how trustworthy you've been. And then you look around and the person who's been lying to them all the time, they have a bunch of faith in. So like I've always told, I always talk to people about the fact that we always judge upward. Yeah. We always tell the president what they need to do. We always tell the pastor what they need to do. We always tell all our leaders what they need to be doing. Not really thinking our leaders think 10 times faster than us. Our leaders think CC 10 times further than us. Like they need to be lifting somebody who's beneath them, not lifting somebody who's above them. The person above them is trying to lift them and trying to create paths for them to walk. Not mm -hmm. saying that you don't serve a purpose and you can't question it and you can't now build a dialogue and enhance them. But there's a big difference in doubting and enhancing. There's a big difference in undermining and supporting. And we need to know the difference. You know what I mean? So that's where I think it gets blurred because if somebody sees 10 moves ahead of you and then they're saying something to you that doesn't make sense to you, it would be in your best interest to take the time to think about what they're trying to say versus rebuttal. So I wouldn't think to put undermine and support in the same sentence. No, I'm saying you got to know the difference between undermine, undermining somebody and supporting somebody. Got it. Not to think that's, you think that somebody would confuse the two? They confuse it all the time. Mm -hmm. You don't think people confuse it all the time? Oh, Let's think of the cliche strong black woman. Oh, you're right. Okay. Let's think of that. Yeah, you're the right. Strong black woman and what we and our community think is a strong black woman. And she's constantly like, when now you walk into a support yeah. the black woman, she doesn't understand that you're not trying to undermine her. You're trying to support her. Mm -hmm. So meaning you, you used to carrying 17 bags home. Let me carry some. Yeah. I'm not taking from you. I'm supporting you. I'm preserving. So that mentality, I can do it myself. I can do it by myself. I can do it this way. Not saying all black women in the community are like that, but that's the cliche saying. But that's a good, that's a good example. So I was explaining that there's a lot of people that's doing it themselves and it ain't just, you know, obviously it ain't just black women. It's all around. It's like, overall. Yeah. You're talking to people. Everybody's trying to do things on their own. So they, 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 they mix being uh, somebody undermining somebody with somebody supporting somebody. Yeah. Somebody taking from you versus supporting. So sometimes you got to let your guard down. Understanding that 
like one thing you know going in, and that's why it's important to have great self-awareness, because one thing you understand going in every relationship, or you should understand, is that you can walk away and be a-okay. Mm-hmm. There's never going to be a time you can't walk away unless you put yourself in a position where you're in a codependent relationship. Or when you have, or or you don't typically walk away when you don't give your all, and you still feel like you're the reason why the relationship is has failed too. Definitely, I mean so, that's a mental that's a mental thing. But I'm just saying, you should always understand that you can walk away. Mm-hmm. You should always, if you go on your job working every day and like not really finding ways to save money where you actually, the rainy day comes, you can just walk out your job because then they're going to have control over you the whole time. And you're always going to feel disgruntled and you're always going to feel like you have no force to be there. Yeah. And if you have no choice, nine times out of 10, you're going to be a disgruntled worker. Mm -hmm. Nine times out of 10, you're going to be a person that don't want to be there ever. Mm -hmm. Because they, they control your livelihood. Yeah. And that control will, will destroy you. Yes, absolutely. So you always want to be in a situation that you know you can walk out of because you don't want nobody needing you. You want people to want you. Mm-hmm. That is the greatest gift somebody can give you because love is a want. And it, I mean, it is a necessity to live. So you should search for it. But what I mean by it's a want, meaning with another individual, they need to both want to build what you need to build. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. So... I mean, I'm glad you're feeling us. <laughs> oh, I know that's right. Yep, I know that. <laughs> glad that, you know, but it, it's the truth. Like, and and when I mean by they control what's going on, I mean, do you have friends that, because maybe you don't have, maybe you don't have the bills that allow you to move the way you want to move. Mm-hmm. But do you have friends, family, do you have people around you you know for sure will hold you down if push came to shove? Because that's the power I always had. You know what I mean? I always had great, great people around me where I'm like, yo, listen, I could walk out of here. Like, I have people that's going to support me if I don't have. You don't want to put that on their they lap, but you also know, like, you can't treat me any other way. And self-respect changes everything. Oh, you that friend? But is anybody that friend for you? Definitely. That's it. I know everybody can see each other's comments, so I don't want to have to keep saying the name. Oh, uh, oh. Uh, you can't call it. What do you, uh, you wow. have to step back. You have to step back and really look at what you're working with. Like, everybody wasted tomorrow. Today's the day. Yeah. Today's the day to really reflect. I tell people all the time, like, you go into a relationship, understand that tomorrow can be gone. Like, mm-hmm. they can leave. Understand you make one mo- wrong move, relationships are fragile. Like once you step out on trust, you'll never get it back. So if you have people around you that you're unsure about, yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of space running in your head because you don't know where they stand. Well, yeah, the fact that you're around people that you can't necessarily rely on, but yet they could rely on you, it's a one-sided relationship. Definitely. Definitely. And not, not only are they abusing you, but you're abusing them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because you, it seems like you're getting power from or you're getting self-respect from the fact that you're there for them. Because you should be around like-minded people who reciprocate. Absolutely. You, you, you got to believe you deserve that. Mm-hmm. You know, me and Jerry just was having a discussion. I mean, we, 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 we go back and forth, too. You know, yeah, we fight all the time. Like she said that, <laughs> like she was telling, she said on one of the podcasts, like she tends to use me because, you know, I'm grounded. And sometimes I always have to say, listen, I'm not being you. Mm-hmm. So I was explaining to her, I said, you put me in a hard situation. And I gave her the analogy. I said, what if, you know, your parents, what if your parents is out, you know what I mean? You're like, yo, listen, you got to spend your money better. You got to budget your money better. You got to do this with your money better. And they're your parents, you know what I'm saying? So they raised you, they took care of you. So you, you always have that in the back of your head. So you bail them out of situation, you bail them out of situation, and they keep financially not spending their money correctly. And then they get to a place where they're ready to get evicted. They put you in a bad situation because God forbid you don't help them and you have the money to support them or you have the financial means to support them. What do you do? Like, you gotta, you have a choice right there, and they put you in an unfair disadvantage. That's abuse. Well, yeah. So the reason they why. They rely on you. Well, yeah. So I saw that example very clear, 
And the issue with that was, yeah, you know, they 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 decided not to manage their money properly, and then they used, and then they knew, then I then they came to me so I could bail them out. So I get that, right? But the argument that we had was about, you know, me making a decision that I didn't really think was going to impact the group, but it impacts the group. You yeah. know what I mean? Like it's one of, like the, to be all the way real. The the example was, you know, with this whole coronavirus thing going on. I live in a different borough than Aziz does, right? And I figured that since they had, you know, since we have to, you know, practice social distancing, I'll just stay home in the Bronx and he can stay down here. But he was saying that we should all be together because if anything happens, if I get sick, he gets sick. If any one of us gets sick, we have each other. And in my mind, I'm thinking if I get sick, I could just stay my ass home and sleep it off. Right. I'm not I'm not really active. I'll just sleep until the fever breaks and, you know, go and hopefully, you know, feel better as time goes on. But he made a better point. He was like, well, why would you have why would you think it's okay for you to be by yourself when you have people that you call your friends that you you know, you you are a part of a village? Why would you think that that's okay? And I thought it was okay because I thought, like, how am I infringing on you if I'm home? She was, she, she was had, she, you know, she had a residual effect of the, I can do it myself. But it's not, I'm thinking I'm sick, like I'm sleeping, like what does it even matter? But it did matter because we I also okay. have a- We don't know what's going on. You are responsible for how other people are going to take that in. Yeah, so then- Definitely, Like if we all sick, that would be the situation. But I mean, it was even bigger than that because- I plan for all of us to actually link up and make sure that we're in one space so we all can take care of one another. And she decided she, she decided now that they're shutting everything down. Now she can make the decision to come and be all together. So that's the thing. And I was like, so what was the difference between three days ago to now? They shutting everything down. So we should have we could have been ahead of everything, stocked up for all the people involved, making sure everybody's okay. And we can move forward as a unit. We'd have been three days ahead of this shutdown. Them shutting down the city. So, yeah, my biggest issue with that was that, you know, I was thinking I had to pack up. I didn't know how long this was going to last. It's just, it's a whole bunch of unknowns. And I just thought that, you know, at the time, I just, it just made sense when I was arguing my point to stay home. But the bigger point was that he's right. Like, if I would have came to that conclusion a week ago, we would be all settled, we'll have all the food that we need and we will be fine, right? But now they're shutting everything down. Now, you know, there may be a possible curfew. Now we can't find things like food is not as as easily to get as easy to get. So things are getting a little stressful. Lines, they shutting everything down, only 10 people could be in the Yeah, place. so yeah. he's right about that. So oh. I'll, well, I will put this on record because this is being recorded. Aziz, you were right. I am here. I packed my suitcase <laughs> and I made my way downtown. But he's right. Like, those are the fights that we have. Me kind of going back into a selfish place, thinking about it's no big deal. I could take care of myself when I didn't sign up to take care of myself. And the key thing I always tell her, this is the key thing for everybody. If I'm thinking about you, you thinking mm -hmm. about you, who's thinking about me? Yeah, agreed. That's when you know you're not in a healthy relationship. So every time our relationship becomes unhealthy, that's what I say. If you're thinking about you, mm -hmm. who's thinking about me? Yeah. Because I'm thinking about us. So that's the biggest thing, but Delcia said that she has a friend that is good to good, you know, good for talking, but not finances. Amazing to talk to, but give, you know, she gives good advice. So I think you're getting back in that relationship. I think that's not a bad thing. We wasn't mm -hmm. saying financially, like some people are more financially stable than others. That's what we were saying. So if that friend is very is there to support you and probably couldn't help you financially, but could help try to help you through it, and they can brainstorm with you and they can do certain things. Yeah, that that's big. What we're saying is when it's one-sided. Yeah, they're not, they're not supporting so you at all. So you're the financial person for most of your friends because you have the most money? Isn't that, that, that changes everything. But what mm -hmm. I'm saying is if you're the person that would actually make sure that that money works for you and everybody around you and they won't do the same for you. That's what mm -hmm. I took it as in the beginning. So I want to be clear here. Everybody does serve a different purpose. The reason why they're friends is because you, you, you share the same principles, meaning we're given the same means that would do the same things for each other. So if they were the more financially stable person, they would do the same thing you're doing for them. 
and mm-hmm. vice versa. If you can give better advice, you would do the same thing for her as she's doing for you. Because everybody's not gifted at the same things. Yeah, absolutely. Everybody didn't put themselves in the same situation. So I think that that's the, that's the most important thing, to understand where everything's reciprocated, understand the role everybody plays in your life, but at the same time, making sure everybody's principles are similar. Mm-hmm. Because if you're giving money away, giving money away, and then when somebody comes up, they're not helping you out when you need it, and they have the means, then yeah, I think you really have to think about that. So yeah, y'all good for each other, definitely. Yeah, we just wanted to make sure that your relationships were were even and that you were, you know, every relationship is give and take. Like, we'll be lying if we, you know, most people say, you know, I just give, 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 give. But that's not that's not a healthy relationship. So every relationship, you should be getting something in return and you're putting something out there because your friends are getting it as well. So we just wanted to make sure that you were around people that you were getting equal support from. Definitely. How everybody holding up? Like everybody holding up. I see I see people drifting a little. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we were approaching that hour is nine fifty eight, you know, so I think we gave people a lot to think about. Okay. Jessica's good. <laughs> Jessica, did you like this format um better? <laughs> Gucci. <laughs> Man's Gucci. You're expensive over there. Yeah. <laughs> He's all about that bag. <laughs> yeah, expensive over there. Save that money. Yeah. <laughs> Save that money in the time of crisis. Yeah, seriously. But that's good. I mean, we glad that people are getting something from this. I mean, I guess based on the hour, based on the time, some people, you know, that committed didn't, didn't show up, but we don't care if it's one person. Yeah, absolutely. We're gonna, be on there. We're gonna be here just to have these discussions because we want people to be refreshed. We want people to have a platform to have a discussion. And I mean, maybe next time if it's a small group, we can, you know, we can chop it up. But I think it's very important for us to start understanding what healthy, what an unhealthy relationship looks like and start defining our terms because if you keep going into relationships, you keep going into friendships, you keep doing all kinds of, uh, of willy-nilly things instead of defining what exactly things mean. Because everybody can be philosophers. Yo, well, if you look at it from this angle, and you look at it from this angle, and if you really dealt with this angle, everybody can do that. But there is, like, we deal with percentages. So I'm not betting on a smaller percentage than I am a larger percentage. So understand, I'm moving with the 90%. So what makes sense 90% in most situations, I'm rolling with that and I'll bank on losing the 10%. Mm -hmm. You know, I can live with the fact that, or I can die with the fact that I went with the the greater percentage of what was going to be beneficial, what was going to be the better and the more practical way of dealing with things. So um, Jasmine wants to know, do we have a suggestion box in which we can bring topics to you? Oh, definitely. Yeah, of course. Definitely. I, I would say... They could DM us, right? Well, huh? No? What you mean? I said they could direct message us. Yeah. Direct message us on any of our social media platforms. Everybody's mm-hmm. on our platform. Don't hesitate. Don't hesitate to um, reach out and really, you know, have discussions and, you know, throw things out there. We'll definitely talk about whatever topics need to be discussed because that's what we're here for. That's what we do yeah, for Yeah, Absolutely. Them. Okay, Jessica takes strangers' words with a grain of salt. So the last time was difficult for me. Okay. So first off, first off, when it comes to when it comes to new people, when it comes to discussing things with new people, I would have to understand the strangers because we're talking about, you know, building personal relationships. So when it comes to somebody you don't trust, somebody like we all say the the belief is what's the important thing. So when it comes to somebody you don't trust already, or you really feel like you don't feel comfortable around, then I would say nine times out of 10, you're going to regardless take their stuff with a grain of salt, whether they're on point or not. But the whole point is to build trust within yourself, build a strength within yourself 
So when you into any situation, you can trust somebody at their word because they got to honor it. I always tell people it's harder to maintain the truth over a time than it is, you know, than it is to, 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 to um, not trust the person because mm -hmm. you don't trust the person. And it, it turns out the fact that they was on point and they was right. Then you start behind the eight ball. Yeah, absolutely. And now you got to prove yourself to them to, to balance it out. So you always want to give trust. And what I mean by trust, when you say grain of salt, I hope you're not like, I'm not talking about giving out your bank account. There's trust that's given and there's trust that earned, that's earned. You trust the person that they were because they never took, they never took their, they never deceived you. They never did anything. So they need to start with a clean slate. You believe in innocent to proven guilty. You have to honor that. So that's another principle that you have to honor. But if they have deceived you and they had did things to you, then that, that's different. That's a whole different thing. Now, as you get to know them, then it's like, yo, you know, can you take this money out the ATM? This is my code. This is my pen. And they can still turn around and destroy you. So like, that's something that we all have no choice. We have to, when we trust, we trust wholeheartedly. And that person has the power. That's what love is. That person has the power to do the worst things to us, but they still going to do the best things for us. But that's what vulnerability that's is, That's how you measure it? love. Huh? Isn't that what vulnerability is? Definitely. Vulnerability is a strength. Mm -hmm. We always say it's a superpower. If you look at some of the quotes we put up, yeah, that's one of them. Like We always say it's a superpower because being vulnerable shows you who's going to take advantage of you faster than anything. Yeah, absolutely. You pull out, the first day you go out with somebody and you're like, listen, I'm going to pay the $50. Don't worry about it. And the next time they come in and they don't reach and they don't attempt, and that's just talking about money, but you know, like you start to see things. You start to see clearly what's going on. So if you're vulnerable at all times, there's gonna be people that talk behind your back. There's gonna be people that have things to say about you. There's gonna, and all those things are gonna come back and they're gonna miss out on somebody that is rare. Because when you have, when you are a very vulnerable person, it's rare in this society. Because I'm not aware of other societies, but I know clearly it's rare in this society. Mm -hmm. So if you're that person, trust me, when it's time to walk away, like Drastic said, all or nothing, when it's time to walk away, you'll feel very comfortable walking away and they will regret it for the rest of their life. I can guarantee you that. So you always want to put yourself in a position with no regrets. So going back to Jessica, if you meet a stranger that's amazing and you don't trust them, you, 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 you messed up and yeah. you're going to regret that for the rest of your life. So just remember that, like, be vulnerable, get to know people, but you don't let people in your house. You know, there's certain things that obviously you work towards when it comes to trust. But the initial thing is, at, the, at a person's word, you can trust them. It won't hurt. So... Okay, what's Jazz saying? Here? <laughs> she said, I think that's key, yeah, being yeah. <laughs> cognizant and vulnerable simultaneously. I got it. <laughs> There's no spell check in the chat room, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, you have to be aware. You have to be um, like vulnerable and put yourself out there. And you shouldn't, you shouldn't have to protect yourself from a person that you're trying to get to know. Because how you're really truly going to get to know them. The minute that you have to protect yourself, maybe you need to reflect and think to think on, do you need to be with that person? Do you, should you be moving forward with getting to know that person? And it may not even be the person, it could be all you with all your baggage and all the things that all the things you have issues with, but maybe you're not ready to move on in that direction and you need to really self-reflect. Definitely. I mean, and, and, and don't just pull a disappearing act. No, no, no. Have the What's conversation. The important thing is, is make sure any any situation you provide closure. Mm -hmm. you have the discussion. You're clear on your terms. You're clear on the reason why. So nobody's wondering. Because to put somebody in that state where they are wondering constantly, it's selfish. You know, it's a really selfish thing. So Jurassic says, well, before that, I think there's a comment before then. If, you're, if, we're, if we are vulnerable just because we're caught in the emotion of the connection, we're hurt the, we're hurt the most because we didn't have a solid direction. Yeah, that, that is true. When you're just jumping yourself in, when you're just throwing yourself in there, that's also an issue. 
Yeah, we're not saying we're not saying like be vulnerable because he's cute. Yeah. <laughs> cute. They, we're saying because they because what they're saying makes sense. Make, yeah, I was just gonna say it that. Makes perfect sense. And we're not saying don't question, don't ask questions, don't we're not saying none of that stuff. Cause you honestly have those questions. So we're not saying trust is lacking trust is asking questions. We're saying lacking trust is leaving the situation, still not trusting the person after you had the right to ask those questions. Like you never gave them a choice. You never gave them a chance to defend themselves. You created something in your head and walked away with that opinion of them without giving them a chance to defend themselves. But you was reading Drastic's thing. I agree with that. Yeah, I agree with that. Oh, it just moved. Sorry. <laughs> I agree with that. Don't jump out the window, give out the keys and security codes on your day one. But other than other than things like that, trust then within reason until the they prove themselves untrust, untrustworthy. Definitely. Yes. Because you give them what you expect to be given. Yeah. Like I guarantee a lot of people in this chat, they seem very grounded. So they seem unreal to people in, in general. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure y'all been in positions where y'all seem so unreal to people because y'all giving them a type of love that they didn't expect, mm -hmm. a type of commitment or a type of care, or a type of, you know, patience or whatever y'all gave them, and they're like, I never witnessed this, I never. Experienced. Or just conversation, like sometimes yeah. like bringing up certain things and certain topics and asking certain questions. And the more you make them feel good, the less they trust you. The more you yeah. make them feel good, the less they trust you. But then they trust in homeboy to do or homegirl to do the best thing. Yeah. <laughs> with, 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 when she never been trustworthy or he never been trustworthy. You know, that's a, that's a, a big thing with our community. We, we are taught like to help the needy, to help, to help the people that don't have or to help the people that hurt or help the, or pray for the people that do wrong. But I always tell them like, if who's holding the world up, it's always the people that are doing the right things and trying to create the rules and regulations and, things that allow us to walk on the straight and narrow. They're holding the world up and who needs more help than them? Mm -hmm. Like other people, when they, see the, the, when they see the path that they're creating, they'll follow suit. So we always say build a village of like-minded, same-hearted people and then spread it and show it then put it on display. I'm not saying you're bragging, but put it on display so everybody else says, okay, this is what this looks like. I want that, I'm gonna make that happen. I'm not sitting there going, breaking my back, putting, you know, inviting a virus in my house mm -hmm. to destroy everything, that, everything walking. So I do think, I do agree with you, Drastic. Like, it's important to, to allow the person to prove that they're untrustworthy and, and, break, and build equity. You get what I'm saying? Like, we all can be trustworthy at untrustworthy at some point. You know what I mean? Like, but is it their character? Is it who they are? Once you build it, there's a rare, is a rare person that gets through the whole life without being, you know, untrustworthy at some point. You know what I mean? Or just not honest with themselves so they can't be honest with you. You know? But at the same time, I always deal with track records. So you build equity. And I'm looking at it like this is not who the person is. So you have more, you have more, like once you start building that, you can make more mistakes than the typical person. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You can, you, I'm going to, I'm going to say, okay, that person did X, Y, and Z. And then you did X, Y, and Z, but I cut you off because you don't have the same equity that person had. You didn't put in the same work. You didn't make the same things happen. You wasn't there for me the same way that person was there for me. So, Really, I, I probably owe them a certain a certain understanding. And that's why a lot of us work through certain issues with certain people because we do know that there's certain things that they built up. But you have to understand your worth at all times in, in those situations. Well, that's key, knowing your worth, because that would allow that would determine what you're dealing with, what you're not dealing with, along with your principles, your morals and you know your beliefs but self-worth is a real big it's a real big deal in a relationship if you don't know what you deserve if you don't know what you want then it's really hard to connect with like-minded people and i think one of the main things that people we, we we as as people dealing in relationships need to understand is relationships are selfish it's for selfish reasons like these are people 
that you pick out of all the people you meet in the world mm-hmm. or you meet in your lifetime to go through life with. So you chose them over other people. So you're going to be selfish in the sense that you brought them into your life, but you're going to be selfless when it comes to how you treat them. Yeah. It means that you're thinking of them at all times, hoping they're thinking of you. You should never think of yourself in a relationship because all other people have you covered. You should just be covering them. Mm-hmm. When you're constantly giving and then you're receiving, everything goes in a circle of motion. But you got to be able to accept, like Drastic said earlier, you got to be able to accept. Well, I don't know if it's Drastic or Jessica, but you got to be able to accept, accept things as well. So when they are giving, you have to say, okay, this is what's coming back. That was Jessica. So I know that there's a lot of people, huh? That was Jessica. Okay. There's a lot of people that just give, give, give and have a hard time accepting back. You have to understand you're giving, 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 but you have to also know that when they're giving, accept it. Well, yeah, because you deserve it. Yeah, you got to know you deserve it based on where y'all decide to be. Understand you're building an empire. Every time you add somebody, they have to be a part of the empire you're building. You know what I mean? You can't just be, oh, I'm living in a house and my friend ain't. My thing always, if I got a house, the next move is my friend's getting out. Yeah. If I got a car, my friends get in the car. If I'm moving in this direction, I open up a door. Best believe everybody's coming in that door with me slowly but surely. Mm-hmm. That's automatic. So that's what I'm saying. And we're going to now show everybody else how to do the same things. And that's to bring it all back. That's what we look at as health. Mm-hmm. Health is knowing yourself well enough to enter a relationship and have the ability to not even look over your shoulder and give everything you have to every relationship you have, knowing you're going to get something in return, confident. Do everybody understand that? Mm-hmm. Or see that perspective or point of view? Okay. Everybody's there. Yes. <laughs> Okay, so, you know, this would be the time to ask any questions. We wanted to give everybody a little more time. So if y'all got any questions y'all want to ask of us, anything else before we, you know, sign off? Well, everybody's good. <laughs> and also, no, I know that this is a public platform, um, but if anybody, you know, we offer services as well. So if you want one-on-one sessions with us, you can also book that online at accountablelove.com. Definitely. Well, yeah. <laughs> Jasmine, I'm cool. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, obviously, there is more person centered, and you know, we take we have friend sessions, so you can you and your friends could sh- show up to a session, and we can really dive in. Yeah, definitely. Like, uh, what's the true issues? Yeah, thanks for the promotion. Yeah, thank you, Jessica. <laughs> she's one of our, she's not only a client. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jessica. Our services have been absolutely life changing. That's great. I'm glad that we were here to support you when you needed us. Definitely. Yeah, we don't never, we don't never just tell it, we don't never tell who's taking the services. Yeah, no. We appreciate it. <laughs> we act like we don't even know you. Is that you know, it's a different relationship, but we appreciate it. So since everybody's cool, you know, we do appreciate everybody for showing up. Remember, every Monday, until we can get out the house somewhat. Yeah. <laughs> back on podcasting. I mean, we're gonna start podcasting. I guess through here, we can invite some people for guests. If y'all are interested in that, also, you can be a guest, a panelist, and we'll put you on, and then we'll have the dialogue and have people, you know, responding back and forth and we'll take questions that way as well. So we're trying to just, you know, keep everything open, you know, keep the dialogue going, keep you informed. Oh well, yeah, so force the people connections. People flip on each other in the house, you know? Mm-hmm. They have equal and healthy relationships. So they're actually building and bringing these relations, these discussions back to their partners and their friends and, and they're building something strong from that. So we just want to plant the seed. Well, yeah, this time in the house shouldn't be, shouldn't push people apart. They should be pulling people together. And if you don't know where to start, you know, you need help, you know, starting that conversation, we can help you. 
but we're also an outlet too if you need you know to have a discussion on what's going on with your life and you want to make improvements or you just need a sounding board because you want to move in a progressive you want to move in a, pro a progressive way then you know we're here to help you as well definitely so you know just just to remind everybody nine o'clock you know y'all can invite friends don't hesitate it's not like we're going to shun anybody. You know, we're going to talk about some things that might make some people uncomfortable if they are the people that's um, doing those things. But <laughs> I'm going to go with anybody in my phone. So, you know, invite people that actually want to want to benefit and support. So we want to thank everybody for coming. Thank all. Yeah, thank you, you guys. You know, this was a beneficial rela um, relationship. Beneficial. <laughs> Nine o'clock, I'm not, I'm not at my best, but, you know. You're welcome, Jessia. You're welcome. Thank you. Well, you're welcome, Jessica Majors. Definitely. You're welcome, Jessica. Always get the invite. All of y'all always get the invite. So next week, enjoy. Yeah. Hope to see you guys next week, Monday at 9. All right, enjoy. Bye, guys. Good night.